afternoon at BSC Expo 2019. I'm really happy to be joined by Guillermo Navarro, uh, ASC. Thank you for coming along. You pronounced uh, it almost all right. I know. I've been practicing for a long time, believe me, in front of the mirror this morning. Um, you're going to be doing a, a talk a little later on in the seminar theatre, so I appreciate your time coming to see us. These, these kind of big trade shows, for, you know, the cine and TV market, would you go to these of your own free I, will? I, I, I go to them, yeah. yeah. I go to the cine gear in Los Angeles, yeah. I go to the, the one in Vegas when I can, and, and I've been, I was last year here, but I was part of a panel. Yeah. So I like to combine it with that, yeah. And, yes. Yeah. And what stands out to you when you look around these, this kind of show now? Is, is, it the, is it the technology or is it the... Well, the it, I've always been interested in, in equipment. I, I'm an equipment owner as well. Yeah. So I work with my gear. Right. Yeah. And uh, so I'm always interested in seeing in which direction it's going, etc. And see what, what uh, I can make out of that. And if that's something that, I, that will improve my my work or yeah. not or distract yeah. me or yeah. yeah well that's the thing isn't it yeah. you know it's, it's working out what is technology that aids a creative process and what is technology that is tech for technology's sake well i think technology has uh created a a purpose on itself and uh they're sort of on on track of of something that i don't think nobody knows yeah and in the meantime we connect with it and see um, I'm, I'm a strong believer of, as a filmmaker that the technology has to be at the service of your work and not the other way around. And, uh, and, that's, and I make a very strong case of that, that the equipment is at your service and a lot of my, the purpose of my class is to, to have the, the, cine, the cinematographer capture or recapture the ownership of the, of the work. Technology, in a way, has enabled a lot of ignorance. So everybody's an expert. You can throw a few vowels and a few numbers and an X and a here and there, and yeah. you are on, a, on an abstract conversation. And uh, and that has been uh, as incredible. It, it is all this evolution. It also has. Uh, it, it can be sort of a take a life of its own. Yeah. And 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 create sort of a divorce between that and the filming. And, and with these conversations, I try to reconnect those two worlds. Do you think that once it stopped being a cinematographer, being in quite a lonely place of looking through the viewfinder, yeah. of being in charge of that camera, to the point now where there's multiple monitors that everyone can look at all the time, is that where that disconnect started in a way? Well, that is one of the issues that affects that behavior on set now. So there is... Everybody's seeing if the monitor is well calibrated and with the right lot, etc. Is, is everybody seeing an image that's going to be quite close to the final product? And then they have uh, that triggers all kinds of uh, of reactions, and they become very invasive. And there, everybody has an opinion, and etc. etc. So the work of the cinematographer that traditionally you carry that responsibility, the way that you're the one that knows what has to happen suddenly it explodes and explodes around you and uh, I'm more concerned with other behaviors that the digital world has created like uh, the, there's no the sense of, uh, of concentration and, and rigor of doing a shot because now the dynamic and it's very fueled by the ADs and the actors of keep rolling yeah. so the keep rolling world it's a world where everybody has to sort of uh, just catch up with yeah. with the dolly goes back to a position, the focus puller is wondering what the boom. There's no, there's a shot and everybody buttons up and concentrates yeah. in the purpose of the shot. So that creates a whole dynamic of winging it and, 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 and it sort of deteriorates the work, not only in terms of the efficiency of the day, but of, uh, of the quality that the, that the shot deserves, the yeah. attention that the yeah. shot deserves. Do you think that's also fed into the fact that a, more and more films are quite happy to start shooting without a finalised script? 
because they know oh, they can, it's, it's, it's cheap it's, enough to... Not to mention TV, yeah. where they not only keep rolling, but they throw many cameras and then it's sort of a sorted out there. You know? yeah. So it, I think that has, that has affected tremendously the, the set behavior. Yeah, yeah. Do you find, I mean, you've worked with um, Guillermo del Toro, Robert Rodriguez, who both produce highly individual films that look fantastic, but tell fantastic stories that are real movies. Is that something that excites you when you take a project? Well, that's how, that is what I believe is filmmaking is. So that I have those very strong references of how things should be. Yeah. And then now you're sort of struggling to try to keep that continent together. Yeah, yeah. And uh, when projects come along now, I, actually the, you kind of answered to do it already by actually owning your own kit because uh, I see a big problem with the way technology advances. You could be engaged on a feature for several months. By the time you come to shoot the next one, six months later, a lot has changed. If yeah. you're going out, to get a start new kit every time you're going to shoot. Well, I'm not. I'm not after the latest thing either. I'm. Uh, I want to have a, a the gear that I know how to work, what I'm going to get out, and that it's at my service. And not. I don't want to be chasing that that wave. You know? Of course, I have to adapt and I have to upgrade and etc. But I don't. I don't measure it without rush. No. No. And it's. I mean, do you? Would you choose to shoot on film now? When you if can? I have the chance, yes. Yeah. It's very, yeah. For many years, I was uh, part of a campaign of making a film, a world heritage. That uh, the incredible um, contribution that film has made to the world in terms of creating a language and, and etc. Is, is that you could not think life without it. Though that film should be recognized as something that has to be preserved and protected. Yeah. And uh, also this thing in terms of the industry of the choice of work, there's, uh, it's like if you, we have to, both worlds could coexist. And uh, as artists, we, we should be able to, to choose what materials we like to work with. Yes, yeah. It's like if you tell a painter that he can only use uh, acrylics yeah. or an architect that is only steel. You know? yeah. Yeah. So that, that's the, we, we're used to work um, with much more freedom and more uh, a bigger canvas than that. And then now the, the world is between which sensor or which camera we're, we're dealing with. In terms of my intention of uh, making awareness that the cinematographer has to recapture the ownership of the world has to do also with this uh, entitlement of technology that is really the camera that does the work. So no, no, we like better the Alexa than yeah. this because we like the film look. And there's now a whole uh, demagogic uh, language around it. And uh, it's, uh, again, it's a tool. So you, I can pick a sensor more like I used to pick a, a film stock, or, yeah. right? Yeah. But it's, it's, we are the creators of the image. That's our responsibility, yeah. that's an obligation, but then it's also our, our, our platform. That's our, our, our own. Yes, yeah. I mean, I know Imago are campaigning for sort of co-authorship rights for cinematographers. I, mean, I think yeah. that would be a really good thing, wouldn't yeah. it? Hopefully it will come in, but it's, it's strange that there's more awareness now of cinematographers, I think, within the general public, because you see often the publicity for a film includes when they go to film websites or whatever, have some promotional material, been interview with the director, interview with the star, it may often be an interview with the cinematographer as well. There is, there is an Yeah, that's, a long, that's an know. old problem, and, yeah. and it has to do with how... All those, all those things were divided and unions had to do with that. So the fact that cinematographer doesn't have uh, that sort of rights, like uh, so the music composer has them, etc. You, you are part of the core of the creative team and um, yeah. 
and you are the author of those images. So there's no real argument against no, it. They can't. They can't. But uh, but in in, in in fact, it is a, a practice that is very hard to break. Yeah, yeah. Do you, as an aside, um, when you the first day on set with a new film, are you always nervous? Um, I'm, I have a certain level of anxiety of excitement. Yeah, yeah. I'm not nervous of uh, if, that, if I can no. deal with a challenge or not. It, it's sort of a, uh, an anticipation. Mm. And is the, what, what is the most, ex working up to a film, what is the most exciting part? Working with the director to f define well, it that? It depends film? with which director. There are directors that are really like, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, it has to do. They, they're good directors and, and directors that are in process of becoming directors. Yes. So it's it's you cannot just level no. it like that. No, no. What what excites you though about you know a new project, one that comes along? Is it the story? Always the story? It's all very sto story driven. Yes. Um, it's uh, it, but it's also if I'm able to visualize that story. So if I read the script and I see a movie, yeah. If I see it, then I, yeah. I'm. Yeah, I'm hooked with that challenge because I have a, I have visuals that are to tell it to. Yeah, then you start the hard work. So it's really the film language. Uh, the core of my interest is in the, in the film language and how you tell the story. Yeah, and and uh, how you connect the pieces and all the dots to. And that is as exciting as the first day you started. I bet that's still yeah. you know, that spark is still there. Yeah. Well, it's fantastic. Thank you for talking to us. All right, it's been a pleasure. Um, and I hope you are in time for your, <laughs> your masterclass. Yeah. I will do. Thank you, Navarro. Thank you. Good, wonderful to meet you.